This is James Com, the guy on the bike, welcoming you all back for another half-ass production. And today we're coming to you from 177 North 9th Street in Williamsburg, Pierogi. We're gonna take a look at an exhibition by John O'Connor titled Flannel Tongue. Well, this is the opening night of the new season here in Williamsburg. Everybody's come back from their vacations and their time in the Hamptons. You should see a lot of people that have been out of town. Everybody's back in suntan. I've been watching the development of John's work here at Kurobi for about six or seven years now. He was included in uh, the Greater New York show at PS1, I guess, in 2005. And these are actually very large drawings using graphite and colored pencil. Look at some of the details here. Dealing with a lot of language, letters, symbols. Almost excruciatingly detailed. In the press release, they talk about him coming up with systems and different theories and research that he bases these drawings on. And he'll work on a part of the drawing and finish it and then somehow figure some other concept he wants to work in and then proceed to the next part. This piece is titled Personal Space. 74 by 80 inches. This is over six foot square. see that he probably spends months working on these and really grinds in the color pencil. So we got a lot of numbers in here now, 741. I think one of the things I like about these is that there's, there's always an abstract sense. It might have some kind of logic, but the ultimate images come out as being totally twisted and distorted abstraction. This is 2025. See what he's got written here. War and the threat of war have disappeared for the first time in the history. Currently, 90% of the Earth and I think along with his kind of wacky theories of uh, recording data and things, there's also a certain amount of psychedelic, almost hallucinatory patterning, obsessively repeated shapes and lines. There's Don Clemens, one of the other artists here. Which reminds me, I was going to say that I think that John's work relates to the what I've called the school of meta drawing. And Proby is probably the greatest proponent of this type of work. And I've even theorized that this might be one of the only commonalities of work that is being produced in Williamsburg or has been over the last 10 or 12 years. This is titled The Middle. It's graphite and colored pencil, 80 by 60 inches. This is great because he's basically using these blocks 
rocks with letters on them. I don't have time to decipher the little messages on here. It's really quite riveting when you see this kind of obsessive work done like this. I've got a top section that's broken up into a dozens of colors and a bottom section that's dealing with a lot of black and white. This is the back gallery. This is a new development. Portrait studies. This is titled Itchy Face December 19 by 13. Graphite and color pencil on inkjet grid. $2,800. More itchy face. that John is able to uh, extrapolate so much from a basic idea. And although you can definitely tell that the work is his, types of patterns and the way he develops the designs and the palettes change enough to make them stay interesting. Talking with John O'Connor, but it used to be John J. O'Connor. Did you change your name for this show, or no? It's still Jay. Yeah, it's still Jay. I don't know what they happened didn't. To it. They didn't. The J slipped out of there someplace. Someone took it. Um, I've been watching your drawings for quite a while. I really enjoy them, Thanks. and um, I was sort of wondering about uh, why is it that you stuck with you know work on paper, color, pencil instead of maybe going into making them into paintings. Um, well, I mean, for a while back, I turned to. Uh, I was painting for a while before I even went to graduate school and I was doing a lot of paintings and then at a certain point I think I didn't like the process of like stretching a canvas and kind of preparing the surface and the drawing was kind of more immediate, more direct and um, it was also kind of like diagrams and things so it right. seemed to make sense and then I just kind of let the, I just stuck with it I guess and, and I really liked the surface and the kind of connection to it. Now when you work on these in the studio do you have them just on the wall or do you use large drawing tables and things? No, I, them right, I just staple gun them to the wall and then work on them right there. So, yeah. Sometimes on the floor, but usually on the wall, flip them around a little bit. So. Now also, you know, Pierogi shows a couple of other people who do large scale drawings. Don Clemens is one of them. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people, myself included, have sort of said that that might be one of the kind of uh, only common uh, elements that uh, Williamsburg has sort of produced. Uh, do you feel that there is a kind of a school of meta drawing going on here, or maybe people that are sort of coming to it? Maybe you've influenced a, a group of younger artists that are sort of following in your footsteps. I don't think I have, but <laughs> but I do think it. Yeah, I mean, it seems like it's probably Joe's uh, vision, like something that he has kind of responded to and started to show, and it's giving him more attention. So, I mean, I think with Don's work, you know. It, it's a definitely a different type of drawing, but it's a really sure. serious interest in that kind of process. I mean, one of the interesting things about it is that there are so many different approaches, but I think one of the things you're doing that is sort of pushing it is that you're using a really much larger scale than people are used to, and sort of like what was happening with abstract expressionism in the 40s and 50s, where they were pushing the scale. Now you guys are doing that with drawing, and I think that's a very interesting and innovative yeah. approach. Well, I think it's, with these, actually, a lot of times people will think they're paintings, because that's right. Color pencil, I kind of work it to a point where it's very solid and really saturated color, so it feels like that. But the process is just much more of a. How long does it take? Thing. How long does it take you to do one of the major drawings? I mean, they can take anywhere from a couple months to a couple of years. You know, it really varies. But I usually work on a few things at once, so it kind of it's hard to say exactly. Right. Yeah. And I love the uh, the kind of the wacky systems that you somehow sort of pick up when they seem to change and morph as you're working on them, and uh, and then you sort of fit them together with other things. It's great. Yeah. Well, that's. I was more abstract painter before, and I kind of started to find these other things I was interested in, and it led to systems and information and stuff. All right, well, I'll let you go. Congratulations <laughs> on the opening. I appreciate Looks it. Looks great, Thanks John. Thanks a lot. John J. O'Connor. <laughs> Thanks, Thank John. Take care. Thanks. I brought him his flowers. So this is James Calm reporting on John J. O'Connor here at Pierogi. Street in Williamsburg. Thanks, Kate.